Okay, so uh, thank you guys for coming for uh, the last hour as well. So uh, there's uh, this question that uh, Jeremy asked me about uh, uh, here. It turns out that I forgot a dot about the derivative, and then uh, it will uh, sort of uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah. At least, uh, hopefully, yeah. So P is a constant. Um, yeah. So uh, now uh, I'm going to uh, uh, also mention that, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention for Nesterov's uh, uh, method that there's no sampling counterpart. It's just uh, ODE, but there's no, nothing is uh, known. So in general, the case uh, when you don't have a strong convexity, the sampling methods are not that well understood, the rates. And uh, now I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the uh, discretization of this uh, uh, under damped Langevin diffusion. So uh, you, so we have shown that in continuous time, this is the rate that you get when you choose uh, your parameters uh, gamma and mu and u uh, in this way. So uh, now uh, I'm going to uh, state uh, the rates that uh, were obtained uh, by uh, uh, yeah, so the paper is actually by uh, Cheng, Chatterjee, Bartlett, and Jordan in 2016. So, uh, okay, so let me see. Um, okay. So, first of all, uh, uh, let uh, delta bigger than zero be the step size. And uh, so you will define the, the next step uh, as uh, x uh, underline delta, p underline delta. So, uh, started from uh, x0, p0, and uh, accord, evolving according to Sorry, this is uh, the wrong way to write it. This is dpt and this is dxt. Okay, this was the. So, okay. So basically, what is this? So in xt uh, underline, you have just uh, evolving according to PT. And in PT, you evolve according to the uh, under the Langevin, but you make the gradient term fixed in X0 instead of XT. So this whole thing can be written in an explicit formula in terms of a normal random variable and some coefficients in X uh, 
zero and p zero. But the but this is not the standard Euler discretization. This is a second order discretization. Okay? And uh, if I would have written a formula directly, it wouldn't be clear where did it come from. But this is the way that it makes clear the connection with the Langevin, under the Langevin diffusion, which is uh, this. So the connection is very clear. The only thing that we changed is that we replaced this by the gradient of F at x zero. So, so this equation explains how do you get uh, from uh, um, z uh, k equals to x k p k to uh, z k plus one. So this is the uh, Markov kernel basically. And uh, now. Uh, what, uh, okay, so I, I will denote this Markov kernel by uh, P uh, delta underline. And uh, what uh, they have shown is that uh, if you have uh, mm, any distribution uh, nu, and uh, zero smaller or equals to delta smaller than one, and you choose u to be one over capital M, gamma equal to two, then uh, the two Wasserstein distance of the uh, one step from uh, uh, mu and uh, the target, sorry, um, Okay. Okay, for any two distributions. Okay. No, sorry, sorry, no, 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 no. This is uh, not. Okay. Uh, so, you have. Uh, you are, what you are doing here is to control the to Wasserstein distance between this approximate kernel and the true uh, underdamped Langevin kernel. So these two can be upper bounded in terms of delta square times square root of uh, two epsilon k over five, where epsilon k is something that uh, uh, controls the um, the expected value of the um, square of this uh, PT. Okay, so uh, um, so this is a bound on the difference between the discretization and the true uh, and the Dambelangium and diffusion. And then uh, based on this and uh, using the fact that the true Langevin diffusion is converging at a geometric rate, they have obtained the following uh, theorem. So, uh, okay, so if you choose uh, uh, expected value of, according to the target, uh, x0 minus x star, square is less than or equal to d square, and uh, p0 is 0. Um, and you choose uh, delta to be uh, epsilon over 100 uh, for kappa times uh, square root of uh, 1 over d over m plus capital D square. Then, um, okay, then for n greater than or equal to, uh, okay, some constant 52 times 
kappa square over epsilon times square root of d over m plus d square times logarithm of um, epsilon. You have a uh, two vessels and distance between the um, end step from uh, nu and the target is uh, upper bounded by epsilon. So you have an order uh, square root of d over epsilon. OK? Yeah. Yeah. Sir? Epsilon k is uh, is is just a, they just denote this constant in this way because maybe it's related to this p that has a kinetic energy. <coughs> there's no there's no there's no value attached to this k. It's just the wall constant that is defined in this way. The theorem. There's no oh this is kappa. Sorry, sorry, this is kappa. I should have uh, written uh, a bit uh, bigger. So this is kappa, OK? Kappa square. So this is uh, capital M uh, over small m. Yeah. So uh, the idea is that uh, the if you make a, so, OK, and, and then in the kappa, the dependence is a, is a, okay, I, it's not that, yeah, so there's a square here, and then there's also this uh, small m that appears here. So, uh, but in general, uh, uh, you can see that it's a square in kappa. So, um, yeah, so this is a much uh, uh, better rate than what we obtained f from uh, discretizing the Langevin diffusion, where the rate was uh, uh, d over epsilon square. So you got square root of d over epsilon here. Because uh, the key reason is that this discretization is a second order. So you take a square root of the previous rate, and you get this, basically. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, another way of uh, discretizing these things. No, other way of getting uh, Markov chains or Markov processes that converge to mu from ODEs. And uh, this is the piecewise deterministic uh, MCMC that's been recently popularized by papers by uh, Arno and uh, also by others. So uh, and now you, um, so assume that uh, Z is the state space. Um, and uh, the PDMP, so piecewise deterministic marker process, okay, is a Cadillac process on Z. So uh, you, it has to have an ODE. Okay, so this uh, is called uh, the drift function, and uh, the flow function is uh, defined such that z t equals to theta uh, phi phi t z zero. So this phi t is the uh, okay. This is the flow. So once you have this ODE, if you would just evolve according to it, you wouldn't converge to anything. 
So you need to have uh, some events that uh, happen according to the event rate. Lambda, which uh, Okay, and then an event happens in time uh, t, t plus epsilon, okay, with probability lambda z t times epsilon plus small order of epsilon. Okay, so this is the event rate. And then, when an event happens, you have a, uh, you need to have a Markov transition kernel. Okay, so uh, Z, T will be, uh, replaced according to some kernel Q from Z T minus. So this is before the jump, and uh, this will be the new value, okay? So, so one at T and, uh, uh, okay, so it's also George and uh, Arno. So they, they have uh, this recent paper that, uh, um, states the uh, conditions on the flow, um, the event rate and the Markov kernel uh, sufficient, okay, for uh, uh, guaranteeing that uh, mu is a stationary, so that, no, that rho is a stationary distribution. Okay, so uh, now uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, explain the conditions there, but what I'm going to do is to show an example of such a process, which is the bouncy particle sampler. Okay, so uh, you have uh, um, X is RD, and you define uh, V as RD as well, and uh, Z is a product space with uh, X times V, and uh, you define uh, mu DX to be proportional to uh, exponential minus UX times dx, and uh, you define uh, psi to be uh, the standard normal on z. So, uh, not z, but uh, v. Okay, so, uh, So you have uh, mm, the you denote by Z as a combination of X and V, and uh, the target distribution that we are going to look at is the product of uh, mu dx times uh, psi dv, and uh, the flow no, the drift function in this case is simply uh, is simply uh, V zero. So this means that we move along straight lines and never change the velocity. And then uh, the, um, okay. So uh, the refreshment rate, so the event rate will be the some refreshment rate, which is positive plus the uh, gradient of u, x, uh, and v, uh, 
and the positive part of this scalar product. And uh, the bounce event, so the Markov kernel, will be uh, lambda refreshment over lambda z times, uh, OK, so you're just going to stay in place. Uh, but uh, you, so you stay in place in x, but you refresh. Um, um, you refresh V with an independent copy, and then with probability uh, lambda Z, okay, oh. I'm just going to write it in this way. So with probability gradient of UX V positive part over lambda Z times, uh, in this case, you again stay in place in X, but you uh, replace uh, uh, V to be uh, um, reflected along the gradient. Um, uh, OK. OK, so, uh, so basically this reflection along the gradient uh, is uh, uh, is nothing but V minus uh, V gradient UX. Uh, times uh, gradient u x over uh, gradient u x uh, square. So um, yeah, so you really uh, reflect the part uh, of v that is perpendicular to the gradient. And um, now uh, it can be shown that this satisfies the conditions uh, of the paper, and uh, you converge indeed to the uh, correct target, and uh, what uh, you can do as well uh, is that uh, you can have autoregressive bounces. So in this case, when when you no, autoregressive refreshments. So in this case, when you refresh the velocity, here in this setting, you just uh, uh, keep use an independent copy. But uh, in the autoregressive uh, bounce case with proper number refresh times dt, you will, cha you will change v to uh, alpha times v plus square root of 1 minus alpha square times xi, where xi is some uh, standard normal. independent of everything else uh, that was defined uh, previously. So this is the autoregressive bounce case. Uh, so now uh, we have a recent result that uh, uh, looks into the scaling limit of this algorithm in high dimensions. So uh, this was uh, 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 Deligianis. Uh, me and uh, Arno. So, uh, if you have a, a potential U that is a, a product of uh, independent uh, IID components, and uh, if uh, if U for each uh, single uh, component satisfies that, uh, okay, con continuously differentiable, uh, the gradient of u x tends to infinity as uh, x tends to infinity, okay. Um, the second derivative of u is bounded by a constant 
and uh, and the uh, integral of x exponential minus u x uh, times uh, u prime x square dx is uh, finite. Then, uh, and we use this autoregressive uh, refreshment. Then. Uh, Uh, and you choose alpha to be strictly bigger than zero, then uh, for any finite k, okay, the process z n one to k. So this is the first k components of the whole process. Uh, um, converges weakly to uh, randomized Hamiltonian dynamics. So Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which I just call HMC, as n tends to be infinity. So you can look at an arbitrarily large but fixed uh, uh, dimensional uh, subspace, and uh, when you tend n to infinity, when n is tending to infinity, you will get that uh, you are converging to a randomized HMC. And uh, I'm going to define what is randomized HMC uh, here. So. Uh, So randomized HMC is uh, also a piecewise deterministic uh, MCMC process where uh, you have, uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. In this case, uh, in this case, it's N. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, you are right. Uh, this is a um, n-dimensional. So uh, yeah, it would have been better if I used d everywhere, <laughs> but n is d uh, is the same. Um, so um, yeah, okay. I just uh, rewrite everything with d. Uh, D, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so plus line, yeah. Okay, so now D. So, um, R H M C. So. Uh, the Hamiltonian dynamics is simply x derivative t equals to uh, uh, pt. So did I use uh, OK, I'm going to use a vt now. Uh, uh, v derivative t equals to uh, minus gradient u xt. So this dynamics itself is not converging to anything, but this is the drift function. And uh, now uh, what, we, what happens is that uh, with uh, probability uh, lambda ref times dt, you will change uh, the velocity from vt to uh, alpha times vt plus uh, square root of 1 minus alpha square times uh, xi, where uh, xi is an independent uh, a standard normal random variable. So um, OK, I'm going to call it xi t, but uh, it's independent of everything else. 
So with this rate, according to the time homogeneous Poisson process, you replace the velocity in this autocorrelated uh, fashion. And uh, otherwise, you are evolving according to this uh, Hamiltonian dynamics. So uh, what's uh, new is that uh, we have uh, also shown some uh, convergence rates for this uh, dynamics under the uh, strong convexity and uh, smoothness assumptions. So, um, and uh, let uh, Z1T um, equals to uh, X1T VT and uh, ZT2 equals to XT2 VT2. These are two uh, paths uh, of the uh, RHMC uh, driven by the same uh, noise. So don't, there's no uh, Brownian noise here, but we use the same independent uh, random variables here, and also the refreshments happen at the same times. And then uh, if you have this, then uh, we denote by L12 the generator of this joint process. And uh, you define by A uh, um, arbitrary uh, positive semi definite matrix, okay, uh, symmetric. Okay, then uh, you can uh, define the distance between these two. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to call this L uh, Z one T Z two T as uh, um, A times the X square plus uh, 2B times the scalar product uh, between the X and V. And then there's a term with uh, V square. Okay, so it's just a quadratic form. Okay, and then uh, what you can show is that uh, um, okay for any zero less than or equal to alpha less than one, uh, if you and. Yeah. Yeah, see, 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 yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, so if you assume that the uh, function f is uh, OK, so if your function f is uh, uh, always uh, between uh, uh, small m times ident identity and uh, capital M times identity, so its Hessian is always between these two. So for twice differentiable functions, it is equivalent to this. And uh, if you assume this, then uh, um, if you choose your refreshment rate that, that determines how often do you refresh your velocity uh, as, uh, okay, um, 
Okay. And you choose your, uh, uh, okay, uh, this is not a, um, okay, me, uh, okay, I'm going to call this mu c, so this will be one plus alpha times m over square root of uh, m plus m minus alpha times m to the three half over two times m plus m. So this will be the contraction rate. So uh, what holds is that uh, if you apply the uh, Markov kernel on this uh, function uh, z1 t, z2 t, then uh, so if you apply the generator on it, it will satisfy that it's less than or equal to minus mu c times uh, L uh, z1 t z2 t. For uh, a particular choice of a, b, c. Okay? And then it's satisfying that uh, the matrix A form from them is positive definite. Yeah, so what this says is that uh, there's a way to choose your refreshment rate depending only on uh, the constant capital M, small m, and this uh, autoregression parameter alpha, and such that you get uh, contraction rate of this form. And we are like uh, sort of close to optimal rate among the class of distance functions of this form. So uh, you're not likely to get much better rate than this if, as long as you restrict yourself to this type of uh, Yapuna function. And uh, to show this, uh, you basically uh, First, need to uh, uh, compute uh, the effect of the generator on uh, all of these uh, three terms. Okay, but before I go to the proof, I will just mention that uh, this implies that uh, the Wasserstein distance according to this uh, A matrix, so I call this the square of uh, distance. Okay, so this uh, e to the minus mu times t times uh, okay so the convergence rate will be according to this constant mu c and also you can get the same rate with uh, the standard vessels and distance but uh, with an additional constant that accounts for the fact that this uh, distance is not exactly the standard vessel stand but the uh, equivalent version of it. Okay, so uh, now, uh, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, like before by Jordan. Uh, So I, so my intuition is that they didn't really optimize the Yapuna function there in that paper. They didn't really do uh, much to optimize the rates there because they just use a, a function that was of the form uh, x tilde dot t. So this is a difference plus uh, x 
Okay, so this was the Aryapunov function in that case, but it's really a bit uh, restrictive. It doesn't really uh, look at the different coefficients and stuff. So they, I believe our rates are uh, a better order in the condition number kappa. So that's what I believe. And also, so it, it I'm, I'm not sure that uh, it's, uh, there's a quantitative difference, but what I think is that uh, I would be surprised. I think if you choose the refreshment rate to correspond roughly to the noise in your dynamics in a certain way, so that your refreshment is roughly the same in a certain amount of time, then I would expect the two to behave similarly in continuous time. But uh, what we did here is to optimize the refreshment rate to get the sharpest uh, contraction rate that we could manage based on these conditions only on F. So this process can have uh, arbitrarily fast changing Hessian. There's no assumption about that. So uh, if you just assume that the Hessian is bounded between these two, but you don't assume anything else about it, then this is the best what we could do. So, all right. So now uh, uh, I'm going to uh, go to the proof. Any other questions? Okay. So uh, we first compute the effect of the a generator on this. So, um, okay. Okay, so in XT, uh, the, the effect of the generator is the same as just differentiating it in, in, differentiating it in T because you, when you do a refreshment, there's nothing changes in XT tilde. So XT tilde is, again, the difference between the two parts. Okay, and VT. It's a V T two minus V one T. So when you apply the uh, generator on this scalar product, what you get is uh, V T square. So now you have uh, additional terms minus. Uh, Okay, x t tilde h t times x t tilde. So this is still from the derivative, and h t is the integral of the Hessian along the line between the two. And then you have uh, another term, which is from the refreshment, times uh, x t tilde. Um, so you have this scalar product here. And then again, if you apply it uh, one more time to the uh, square of the velocity, then you get uh, minus 2 times uh, Vt ht uh, xt minus lambda ref times uh, 1 minus alpha square Vt so uh, you got uh, we got these uh, three formulas so these come from the refreshment and uh, the others are from the OD and uh, now uh, what we want to show is that uh, star which are defined as uh, minus L1 to uh, um, L, okay? So uh, Z1, T1, 
et sa toté minus mu c times l okay so we want to show that this is bigger than equal to zero because if this is bigger than equal to zero that means that the effect l12 times this yapuna function is less than or equal to minus mu c times the yapuna function and that's what is our goal here and uh, to do this you can rewrite this expression in the following way so uh, you define a matrix x as uh, um, Uh, this is uh, going to uh, be a quadratic form in terms of the relation between the position difference and the velocity differences. And then you define another matrix P, which is the same, but you insert the Hessian inside. So. Uh, Uh, okay, uh, the same thing here, and then uh, VT, HT, VT. Okay, so now uh, you define some other matrices. Okay, V is going to be. Okay, it's the same here, and uh, then uh, minus c times mu plus uh, c times lambda ref times 1 minus alpha square minus 2b. Okay, and then uh, there's another matrix. Okay. And uh, the point of this is that uh, now uh, there's a simple way to express this condition in terms of these. So um, so actually this star is the same as a trace of V times X plus uh, W times P. Okay, and uh, I will uh, let you verify that if you want. <laughs> and uh, now uh, the idea is that uh, we want this to be uh, positive for every possible x and p. So uh, to do that, you, you need to look at the condition Uh, on this, so if you uh, only assume that uh, HT can be anything between these two, then um, it implies that uh, zero is less than or equal to M times uh, X, less than or equal to uh, P, and less than or equal to capital M times X. All right, because uh, you put uh, the way x and p are defined, you put this h inside, and uh, there's an easy uh, way to show that this implies that p will be also between small m times x and capital M times x. So the goal would be to sort of build these two matrices x and p from two positive definite matrices in a way that they are guaranteed to satisfy this inequality. So to do that, you can define um, y as the p minus small m times x, and z as, uh, okay, so capital M times x minus p. So you can see that both of these has to be positive definite. And uh, in fact, you have uh, x equal to y plus z 
over capital M minus small m, and uh, um, P equals to capital M times Y plus uh, small m times Z over capital M minus small m. And then um, you can write a trace of this uh, original expression in a way that um, only uses y and z instead of x and p. So this will be 1 over capital M minus small m times uh, trace uh, v plus small m w times z plus uh, v plus capital M w times y. And now, uh, you have to use the fact that the trace of two matrices A, B is positive definite if A is positive definite and B, B is positive definite. So a trace of a product of true positive definite matrices is bigger than or equal to zero. And that means that this quantity will be positive as long as uh, V plus small m times W and V plus capital M times W are positive definite. And then these quantities do not uh, contain X, T bar or V, T bar and tilde anymore. They are only inequalities on the coefficients A, B, C and the mu and lambda refreshment. So this can be verified to be positive definite uh, um, for uh, some A, B, C, for a lambda ref uh, mu given in the statement uh, Okay, so uh, I'm not going to uh, explain the proof of that. It's uh, just, uh, uh, but it can be verified and uh, that implies that you have this convergence uh, result. So uh, I guess uh, we are close to the end. Uh, so uh, I just mentioned that uh, it's possible to also get uh, rates for uh, uh, a different matrix that's uh, related to hyper hypercoercivity. So in this case, uh, you use uh, um, matrix of the form uh, um, okay. H, H is uh, A times uh, gradient of V, H square minus 2B times uh, gradient of X, H gradient of V, H plus uh, C times gradient of X, H square. So uh, it is possible to show that for this uh, you have a uh, So uh, in this metric, you have a, a linear rate and the interesting thing is that the constants A, B, C and the rate lambda and mu are exactly the same as uh, they were here in the Wasserstein case. So uh, you get the same rates. And this metric in particular upper bounds the, um, okay? So you can show that uh, H, H is bigger than equal to some constant depending on uh, ABC times the standard L2 norm 
So you can get a bounce in the asymptotic variance uh, based on this result. Okay? So uh, any questions? Yes. It's been a bit long. Right here. Yeah, is it minus two, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, I forgot the two there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a refresher. And is there like a human attempt trying to. So right now, the case here is the synthesis of product measure, like it's a bit the 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 Sorry. So uh, the proof is very, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, there's not uh, much uh, mystery there because we are using uh, results from the literature that still work if you use uh, weakly dependence case. So, so you're saying you're so, on the U and on. so you can make a U to depend on Xi, Xi plus one, Xi plus M for some fixed M, and they still uh, yes, and, uh, you make a sum of them, and it still works. It still works, but is it in your paper or like? Uh, it's claim we claim that it still works in the paper, but we didn't uh, fetch out the details very much uh, for this. But I think it's a uh, kind of straightforward based on the arguments that we have. Okay. Uh, George, will, okay. So I forgot to say that. Uh, um, there's uh, some final advertisement if you didn't have enough of these uh, proofs. Uh, so uh, in, uh, on the 20th of September, I will uh, give a talk about Hamiltonian descent. Uh, so uh, it's uh, for optimization. So uh, we define some new optimization methods based on this uh, continuous time uh, ideas and then get discretizations for them. And then uh, there's uh, another talk on 21st of September by uh, George Deligianis, okay, by, who is going to talk about uh, piecewise deterministic uh, MCMC which uh, in particular he will talk about uh, this uh, high dimensional limit and uh, how did we prove this. Okay, so. Uh, so do your results hold when alpha equals one? Of course they don't hold. When alpha equals one, you don't why have. Why, why can't you capture that case? Because in that case you do not do any refreshment. There's no more Markov. Uh, it doesn't, it's not ergodic. Alpha equals a zero. So alpha equals a zero, the problem is that uh, you do not have the Feller property and that makes uh, proof uh, technically more difficult so we didn't uh, do that in this version. Maybe uh, with a, a few more pages of work you could potentially do it. Issue. That is a technical issue with the Feller property there, so. Right, uh, I have another question about yeah. your optimization of Feller. Yeah. Yeah. Trajectory yeah. yeah. Um, in some sense, have you compared, like, you know, on average, intuitively, what you're doing is would correspond to that, right? Yeah, so. Compare your results with. Uh, yeah, so I compared. So there's this reason by uh, Adam Smith and co author. So this is uh, corresponds to taking, uh, if you would have a fixed interval length, then t would be of order. Uh, one over square root of big M. And uh, this is a, a longer interval that they recommend in previous papers when they, when they recommended T to the order uh, square root of small m over capital M. So this is a square root of small m over square root of capital M times. Mine is much bigger and the rate is better if you would look at it in this way. So, 
uh, it is an uh, improvement over the rates that they have if you look at it in this uh, sense. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs>